Kalispera everyone! I hope you all enjoyed the sunshine for the past week. I'm sure I did. So I want to present you tonight a very, very interesting winemaker. Lately, everyone is a bit more conscious about what they're eating, uh, what they're drinking. Everyone is becoming a bit more mindful. So tonight's guest uh, is a female producer who continues her parents' legacy through organic practices and really low intervention wines. Before I'm going to introduce you to my guest, um, I would like to share with you a map um, from Greece just to have an idea where we are locating this evening. So if last week we've been all the way down uh, to Cycladic Islands, this week we're going up north and there is the Gumenisa PDO. We're having this map from uh, Wines of Greece uh, website. Uh, just want to give them credit <laughs> for some reasons. Okay, so please drop your questions in the comments and we will come back to them at the end of this session. And um, I'm not going to keep you any more waiting. And I will um, ask my guest to, to join me. Okay, cool. Hello. Hello, Chloe. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and you? Very good. Uh, what's happening at the moment in the winery, in the vineyard? How busy you guys are? We are quite busy because this year we just planted five hectares of vine. So we have been working for two months quite a lot. Wow. And now uh, we finished. So everything is okay. And um, now we just did also the green harvest. And uh, everything is going fine. For the moment, it seems that it's going to be a good year if everything continues like that. So let's see. Okay. Can you tell us a bit um, more about the wonderful region where you're producing the wines? The many yes, region. of course. So, Gumenisa, it is a very well-known wine region in Greece. It is situated in the northern part of uh, Greece. It is actually 70 kilometers going from Thessaloniki to, northern, to North Macedonia. Um, before Philoxera, we had approximately 1,100 1, um, hectares cultivated, but now we have only 450. Mm -hmm. The main uh, varieties cultivated are Xenomovra and Negoska. Xenomovra is a very well-known variety of grapes from the northern part, and Negoska is the indigenous variety of Humenisa. Oh, okay. And uh, the big, yes, and also Humanis has a PDO zone. It is one of the smallest PDO zones of Greece. Yes, and the blend, yes, it is very, very small. And uh, the blend of the PDO wine is uh, at least 20% Negoska and the rest Xenomavro. Okay, so um, it's the same thing if, uh, like, uh, somebody would say, would see a red wine and is like, uh, you can say it's a Gumenisa. We already know that it's going to be a Sinomavro blend with Negoska, isn't it? It's like uh, yes. the same thing happening with uh, Nausa, isn't it? If we say uh, Nausa, Nausa is, we think is 100% Sinomavro. Yeah. So it's kind of the same. And for Humanisa, since the law says that we need to have at least 20%, then every winemaker for Humanisa decides the blend. For example, we do 70% Sinomavro and 30% Negoska. Okay. There are other winers that do 50-50, mm -hmm. so you can decide. Yeah, it's up to the, the winemaker. Yes. Uh, how is the climate there? How, is, uh, how would you describe it? <laughs> the climate is changing. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm doing that. <laughs> because it used to be, it, we used to have very cold winters, like we would have snow from November, and uh, rainy spring and quite warm uh, summer. But now, for the past 10 years, we have very high temperatures throughout the whole year, comparing to what it used to be. And we normally have very, very dry summers. Mm -hmm. So that's... But it's also what I see the past three, four years that I've been working in Greece, that is, the climate is not stabilized in Humanisa, in Greece in general. Some, some summers may be very rainy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and some others might be very dry, so we don't know what will happen. Yeah, this climate change, isn't it? It's like affecting yes. uh, all over the world. But uh, you just mentioned that uh, exactly. it's happened like for four or five years, uh, you, um, you're a winemaker in Greece. So tell us a bit uh, about your background. 
how how you become a wine yes, so. <laughs> Um, I studied in Thessaloniki. I studied in the engineering agronomy uh, with the division of uh, agric- uh, viticulture and horticulture. And then when I finished, I went to France to do my master's. Uh, I did the Vinifera Euro Master, which is an international master. And there are a lot of universities from Spain, Italy, France, Portugal, and Germany that are being uh, that are cooperating. And also there is a consortium of other universities coming from outside of Europe. So we had the chance to have very good professors and very important people from uh, the industry as uh, professors. And um, I did, because of that, we needed to, to move. We couldn't stay in one place with these masters. So I did eight months in Montpellier, one month in Bordeaux, Then I worked for Lombaral in the south of France, who is a very natural winemaker, uh, quite well known. Then I went to Lisbon for six months, and I came back to France, where I stayed for nine months in Chateau Margaux, and I did my thesis, and I also worked for them. That's impressive. And after that, I did... <laughs> <laughs> and then I did uh, three harvests outside of Europe, in New Zealand, Argentina, and Chile. Wow. And then I came back to Greece in 2017. <laughs> okay. You've done a bit of around the world, isn't it? Yes, It's called the I did is, some. Uh, taking all the knowledge and uh, exactly. come back to, to your parents' winery, isn't it? Can you tell us a bit about that the is... history of uh, your parents' winery? Yes. What's the vision? So, um, I'm the second generation. It was my father who started that. But... Neither my father nor my mother are winemakers or involved in wine themselves. They have different jobs. It was made out of love for wine. It started as a hobby in 1984. They were making wine just for friends and family. And then in 1993, my father planted his first vineyards. It was like three hectares, something like that. And slowly, slowly, he started planting more. And in 2005, he decided to make his own winery. So since 2007, we have been uh, vinifying in our own winery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, anyway, you have to uh, vinify within the zone because you, you're part of the yes. video. So it's a you requirement. You have to vinify in the zone and also take the grapes from the yeah. zone. You cannot take grapes outside of so it. So what is your... Uh, because uh, I was just watching your latest video and um, I, I absolutely enjoyed all the people and all the emotions what you've been um, sending through that. Uh, and at the end, you have a very lovely motto. Uh, yes, so we do. <laughs> <laughs> It is, I wanted to say that because we say that our motto is we make wine as we live with Meraki. So yes, it is uh, then, exactly the moment is, to say that. <laughs> how lovely is that we serve your wines made with Meraki at Meraki London. Is that... Is yeah, that it's for me as well. <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, it's everything come together. Okay. Uh, tell <laughs> us when you, when you first um, become involved in uh, organic practices. Since the very beginning, since 1993 that we f- first planted the vines, my father did it organic and we have been certified organic since then. Because, of course, Once this started as a, a hobby and a love for wine and something that we wanted to consume as family and friends, we wanted the best. So that's why we went towards organic viticulture. And now we slowly, slowly start experimenting with permaculture. Uh, yes, actually, um, I have here your knee, your orange wine, yes. because uh, <laughs> that's one of what you're producing and it's, uh, the light is not very good. Here we are. Sorry, I damaged a bit of lay, but yesterday I was playing, taking uh, photos of it in the garden. <laughs> okay, so, it happens. Uh, tell us a bit, uh, I don't know, Chloe Chachivariti range and uh, what's the idea behind it? Because I know you have the whole range with, uh, it's all connected together. So, um, for me, my idea was always that I wanted wine to be fun. I didn't want wine to be a luxurious product and I didn't, I was not feeling very comfortable around very um, high-end wines. And also I was involved in biodynamics since 2011 from my university and I was very much interested in that. So when I went to, in France in 2013, 
the natural wines or minimal intervention wines were already a total must, and that's how I got involved. And after working with uh, Leon Barral, I think that I, I started liking a lot this idea of not adding or removing anything from the wine, just following the grapes you get, just following the climate you have and the soil you have, and then trying to produce wines that will be very characteristic of the region, but also of the year. Mm -hmm. Because I think that this is the nice thing and the romantic thing about wine, to be able to drink a glass of wine and uh, understand where it comes from or what the climate was during that period. Can you tell us, and for me, this was the idea. Can you tell us a bit how you, how, for example, how you make this orange wine and what's mm. like, a bit uh, for everyone's uh, interest? So, so this is uh, a blend of Malagusia and Roditis. It is 65% uh, Malagusia and 35% Roditis. I actually have four amphoras, uh, which are uh, of uh, 400 liters each one. They are from terracotta, made out of terracotta. So what I do is that I pick the grapes. I use three amphoras for Malagusia and one amphora for Oditis. Uh, we do a very good selection of the grapes. Everything that enters the amphora is very, very clean. And um, of course, it is with the skins. That's why it is orange. And I leave them there for one month with the skins. Actually, I leave the skins in the orange wine more than I do for the red. Mm -hmm. I have to actually a picture um, of you because I understood uh, getting very much involved and I found this <laughs> <laughs> So literally getting in there, like all hands on, all legs on, yes? Uh, yes, yes, okay, that's the idea. Can you about this process? Well, this process is uh, the pressing. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to use a lot of machinery if, if this can be possible. So the idea is that we just select the grapes, we crush them so that it is a little bit easier because otherwise it is very difficult to step, step on the grapes. And then I just step on them because like that, uh, this is a very delicate pressing and you don't extract bad flavors or bad tannins or vegetable uh, like green notes and stuff like that. Do you have a favorite from your uh, brain? It's very difficult to say yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to say that. Well, um, I like all of them for different reasons. Uh, I think that for me the pet nuts are very interesting because I really like the, um, the procedure of making them. I think that Sorry, they are very I difficult. For a second? I think it's uh, yes. Something uh, I can hear something on your background. Yes, because there is a manifestation. Ah, okay, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh. I can, I can, I can close the window if you want. Okay, no, I think they're gonna pass. Is this? Okay, yeah, they're gonna pass. Um, they're gonna pass. So it's very difficult to pick a favorite. It is quite difficult, yes, <laughs> for me. Um, but because everything is. They are completely different wines, than they, uh, they were always wines that I wanted to experiment with. I wanted to do different styles of wines and different methods, like uh, Negosca Carbonic, which is carbonic maceration, or do a Petillon Naturel, or then try to do a Xenomovro that is going to be light-bodied and is going to remind of a Pinot Noir rather than a Nebbiolo. I just must say about your Xenomovro, I uh, got it in a blind tasting and I was sure it's yours and it was indeed. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's so like a textbook and uh, so well made <laughs> and uh, it's actually one of my, my favorite Sinomavros and uh, out of everything, you know, if I'm picking one, it's, and it was like, there were plenty, there were like 20 of them and I was like, <laughs> I was shocked myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad you liked it. Um, can you, I don't know, did you notice these days that uh, the consumer is choosing the wine by its label? And I, I've seen that your labels, they have a very, very, uh, I don't know, descriptive. Can you tell us the story behind your labels? So the first labels I did, like uh, Need the Orange Wine, uh, it is a, a collaboration with my first friend. My first friend when we were three years old. Wow. Uh, yes. <laughs> And uh, we, we are both named Chloe. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a very good artist and she makes all these very delicate and very small designs. So for me, my idea was to show that 
natural wines or minimal intervention wines, even though they seem very simple and very, very simple because you don't add anything, you don't remove anything, at the same time they're very delicate and very detailed. Yeah. And that was the main idea. Then after that I wanted color in the label, on, on all the labels. Mm -hmm. I wanted them yeah, to be happy, fun. Happy yes. <laughs> to be happy and to be the label that you could go in a wine shop and you will see the label, even if you don't like it, but you know your, your eye is going to go there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think are the most misconceptions of, about orange wine between the consumers? I think, okay, orange wine generally I don't think that is always a very easy going wine. It can be, it has different styles and I think that um, a very common style of orange wine is the overoxidized one. Mm -hmm. And possibly people and consumers that are not so they are not so used to difficult wines or different wines, I think that they are afraid of this difference and this um this weird taste. People like people who like white wine, they wouldn't easily go to orange wine. I think that orange wine is mainly for people who like red wine or who like to experiment with different uh, styles. So for me, it is the idea of just being difficult that makes people be a bit afraid and not taste so much. Actually, we have a question here. Um, uh, is asking, um, Scridilly is asking if you notice an increase in the sales of the orange wine. Or how is the trend emerging? There is, there is. However, I think that some years ago it was the peak of orange wine. Uh, now it is going on, it continues, but it's not that I can see an increase now. I think that it is a stable thing going on in the market. What I think that is increasing a lot in sales is the pet nuts. Now uh, I think that uh, the fashion is the pet nuts. Can you tell us briefly about, about the pet nut? Because I know you're doing an amazing one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So the pet nut is a, a very interesting uh, idea of uh, making a sparkling wine in a very natural way. It is the first fermentation, so actually you start the fermentation in the tank and before it is finished, when you have appro approximately 20 grams per liter of uh, residual sugars, you bottle the, the wine so that the fermentation continues in the, the bottle. So you don't have the traditional method that gives a lot, a lot of bubbles, you have, but it's not also not frizzante. It is something between them mm -hmm. and it can also be cloudy, can also be natural. It is uh, one of the ones that we don't use any sulfur in it. Mm -hmm. I do it in a collaboration with a friend of mine uh, who is Swedish and we did um, the same masters together in France. And uh, it is a very difficult wine because since the fermentation is going on in the bottle, once it is finished, of course, there is a lot of uh, lees inside the bottle and you need to take them away. So we do the gorgement à la volée, we, meaning that we just, after the fermentation, we put the bottles upside down so that all the lees go on the neck and then we open them one by one to take out the lees, mm -hmm. fill up the wine and then close. And this year we did 3,000 bottles by hand. Wow! Yes. <laughs> Take that one by one. That's, that's a lot of work. One by one. That's a lot of work. One by one. <laughs> okay. Actually, I have here another uh, interesting question because uh, so it's asking is drinking orange wine is less probably to have a headache next day? I would say that drinking wine without sulfur makes that. And because orange wines normally are least intervention wines, maybe that's why. Because other, other than that, doesn't have something that would uh, this, lead uh, there. I think, I think I've been reading about this. This is like one of the myths with the orange wine, you know, like uh, it's circulating all over the internet, like you're getting like a less, uh, less headache uh, fr from them. <laughs> Well, I think you well, get a headache well, if you're overdrinking anyway, so... <laughs> yes, whatever you overdrink, you're going to have a headache. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just wondering, as a, as a woman, uh, how is your personal experience in the wine industry? And I don't know, what struggles you come across or, I don't know, what successes has, have you had? Well, it's a very good question because uh, it is true that this industry is quite uh, male dominated. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, it is, it is, but yes. We're coming as well. 
Yes, of course, of course we are. <laughs> Watch out, <laughs> uh, especially in the production, yes. because in the wineries there are a lot of men working, and also the, it is true that the job is quite, it's quite difficult, and we have to lift a lot of weight and stuff. So there, a woman is something like um, it's not very easy to blend in normally. And for me, my personal experience, I don't know if it was like that for all the girls involved in wineries, but my, my personal experience was that a lot of times I needed to work much more than a man to prove what I can do and to not be considered another girl who is uh, not very strong or who is not capable of doing things. Or who's going to complain. And also, yeah. who is going to complain, who is going to get tired very easily, who will go, want to go home and won't, don't want to go inside the tank or anything. <laughs> and also the other thing that I see now that I'm making my own wine and I'm taking over the winery is that especially people that I'm, are working with us in the field, uh, the moment they see me giving instructions, This is a very weird moment for them. A very weird moment for them. Um, in and sometimes they be isn't it? We still learn. Yes, in 2020, yes. And sometimes they become rude. So I think that my main struggle is not to take that personally, yeah. not to react in the same way, but instead of reacting, to respond and try to find the way for the job to be done without any. Yes. Fight, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> is there uh, is there maybe a woman in uh, in the industry or outside of it who who has inspired you through your career? Um, I think that it would be Filipa Pato from Portugal. Okay. Because she's uh, she's also a woman. She also came back to the family winery and she started making her least intervention wines. And I remember that she was one of my favorite winemakers when I was studying in Lisbon. <laughs> And I really like that on the label, she was ma uh, writing wines without makeup. Oh, wow. uh, Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that, I don't know if I've, because I've never met her personally, mm -hmm. but I've been always following her, her wines and what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, the last question from me is, how difficult have you find to uh, launch yourself into London market? And I don't know, who helped you to uh, grow here? Or who, who are you collaborating? We are collaborating with uh, Malk Pink Greek. Mm -hmm. uh, two Greek guys who have been living in London for a very long time. Yes. Um, very nice guys. Yes. <laughs> Very, very nice. And actually, they started collaborating with my father, and they were mainly importing the Pidio Gumenza, which is also our most famous wine. And then slowly, slowly, when I came back to Greece, I wanted to meet them. And uh, when I came in contact with them, we bonded very well. We could find a lot of similarities, and we could speak the same language. Mm -hmm. And it's true that now the London market for the wine is going very well with at least intervention wines. So we... We bonded very well like that. And I think that especially for this range of wines, this market is going uh, pretty well. Yeah, well, we have, a, maybe I think in, uh, in London, shortage area is very, very... Uh, well, okay, you tasting the same one, what, we, what, we ha what I'm having? I'm tasting the 2019. Oh, so I'm having the <laughs> yeah. 2018, okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to need to uh, ask uh, the guys from Bolby and Greek for a sample of that. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, thank you, Chloe, for spending uh, this evening with us. And uh, I really, uh, I wish you to have an outstanding vintage, you know, like... And thank you very much. Even more wines like this. You are doing a great job. And uh, thank you very, very much. inspiring us and uh, keep the good work up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks and, uh, thanks for having me it was a very nice idea I'll, thanks uh, I'll see you around hopefully when all this madness is um, ending yes. how is it happening now actually uh, with the lockdown restriction they, they are uh... in Greece we are back to normal almost like imagine that today schools opened ah, um, okay. bars and uh, restaurants are open so we are going back to some extent of normality so have you started <laughs> again the winery store and we will this week with some uh, differences like uh, according to the COVID-19 to have some safety measures 
We are still waiting for uh, the government to say, to tell us exactly how we can do it. But I think that if not this week, next week, we're going to open up. Okay, cool. I wish you good luck in the future and uh, take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chloe. You do. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Um, thank you for watching. And next week, I'm going to have another amazing female winemaker. Uh, that will be Theodora from Rovali Winery. She also has international experience and as well she went back to Greece, you know, to take the, wine, the Greek wines to a different level. So hopefully I'm going to see you next Monday, the same uh, time and uh, stay safe until then. Bye now.